Hello everybody, welcome to this next video on linear algebra. So see what is the picture we have right now. We have a linear operator from V to V. We are seeking to know whether it is diagonalizable or not. Diagonalizable means is there a basis with respect to which it has a, a diagonal representation, right? So it means that there exists a basis, a basis beta of v such that t beta beta is a diagonal matrix right so this is what we are looking for and we saw that t is diagonalizable if and only if uh, there is a basis beta of v consisting only of eigenvectors of t this is the result which we are using till now. So what we are doing, we are uh, steps are uh, you take t, then you write the corresponding matrix, then you find the eigenvalues, and then you find the corresponding eigenvectors, right? And if your system is uh, your v is n-dimensional, say v is n-dimensional, so if here you get if you get n linearly independent eigenvectors then diagonalizable if not then no then not diagonalizable so this is the process we are doing till now now obviously we as a mathematicians always try to make you know say things simple although sometimes that leads us to you know very complex things but that is what we try so now we want that okay so can, can, can we stop somewhere in between that we don't have to go up to the computation of eigenvectors before uh, like just to know whether the given linear operator is diagonalizable or not so what our demand right now is 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 there any way that without computing eigenvectors We tell that T from V to V is diagonalizable or not. Right. So in this video, I will tell you that there is one thing we, we can do uh, that will give a partial answer to this question or this uh, query in our mind. So this uh, video will give a partial answer to that. So here we have a result that eigenvectors, eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are linearly independent. So, so here this result is one way. So here we are saying if lambda 1 and lambda 2 are two distinct eigenvalues so that is lambda 1 is not equal to uh, lambda 2 and there is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1 there is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2 then v1 and v2 are linearly independent that is what we are saying but we are not saying this is what we are saying but we are not saying that if lambda corresponding to lambda we have two eigenvectors we are not, uh, not saying that they are linearly dependent so we are not saying that if v1 and v2 are eigenvectors corresponding to same eigenvalue then v1 and v2 are linearly dependent so this theorem is only one way so here this is not what we are saying this is what we are saying we are saying that if you have two distinct eigenvalues and corresponding to two distinct eigenvalues you find out the eigenvectors then for sure those eigenvectors are linearly independent but we are not saying that if you have one eigenvalue and corresponding to that eigenvalue you have two eigenvectors then we are not saying at all that v1 and v2 are linearly dependent this is not what we are saying so this is one way so let us prove this result then we will use it to answer what we 
started with with the question we started with so proof is nice so uh, we have to prove that uh, suppose let us let us uh, suppose lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n are distinct eigen values of t and let v1 v2 vn are corresponding eigen vectors respectively right and this is what we are assuming to prove is that v1 v2 vn are linearly independent so we'll prove it by contradiction let if possible v1 v2 vn are linearly dependent now if they are linearly dependent then obviously there will be the smallest set which is linearly dependent and after that every superset will be linearly dependent so out of these let v1 v2 vs be the smallest linearly dependent set you're getting it so you have a linearly dependent set then inside that set for always you can find the smallest linearly independent set and after that if you go further down you will get the linearly independent sets so this is the smallest linearly dependent set fine and below that you will get uh, you will start getting linearly independent sets okay so v1 v2 vs be the smallest linearly dependent set okay if this is the smallest linearly dependent set and if i bring v1 out it implies v2 v3 vs is linearly independent right because we are saying that this is the smallest and if you take one element if this is not special that i will take v1 you can take any element out if this is so it means that v1 is linear combination of v2 v3 vs because here is a set which is linearly dependent here is a set which is linearly independent and there is one element which is taken out then for sure that element is a linear combination of other elements therefore v1 is say alpha 1 times alpha 2 times v2 plus alpha 3 times v3 plus so on alpha s times vs where at least one alpha k is where at least one alpha k is not zero because this is what we are saying where th there should be one alpha k at least non-zero fine okay so now now you see you call it one now you apply t on one apply t is your linear operator on it so t of v1 will be t of alpha 2 v2 plus alpha 3 v3 plus so on alpha s v s so because t is linear so this will be alpha 2 t of v2 plus alpha 3 t of v3 plus so on alpha s t of v s this is equal to t of v1 now because v1 is an eigenvector so this is alpha 1 lambda 1 this is lambda 1 v1 lambda 1 v1 is equal to alpha 2 this is lambda 2 v2 plus alpha 3 lambda 3 v3 and so on alpha s lambda s v s why because v1 v2 v s are eigenvectors corresponding to uh, lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n now you have this result call it star now what you do you multiply this first equation with lambda 1 multiply 1 with lambda 1 so you'll get lambda 1 v1 on the right hand side you will get lambda 2 alpha 2 lambda 1 v2 plus alpha 3 lambda 1 v3 and so on alpha s lambda 1 v s now you subtract star and double star so you do star minus double star so left hand side will cancel you will have a zero here on the right hand side you will have alpha 2 lambda 2 minus lambda 1 v2 plus alpha 3 lambda 3 minus lambda 1 v3 and so on alpha s lambda s minus lambda 1 v s now because this v2 v3 v s are linearly independent here we have claimed that v2 v3 v s are linearly independent since v2 v3 v s are 
linearly independent therefore this quantity is 0 this quantity is 0 this quantity is 0 alpha 2 into lambda 2 minus lambda 1 is 0 alpha 3 into lambda 3 minus lambda 1 is 0 and so on alpha s into lambda s minus lambda 1 is 0 so now because lambda i's are distinct so these are number these numbers are not 0 since lambda i's are distinct therefore these numbers are non zero so you get alpha 2 0 alpha 3 0 and so on alpha s 0 so all alpha k 0 so that is a contradiction to the fact that there should be at least one alpha k non zero this this fact here right so you get a contradiction so we get a contradiction so when you get a contradiction, therefore what we supposed was wrong. Our supposition is wrong. And what we supposed? We suppose that lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n are linearly dependent. So it implies, uh, sorry, v1, not lambda 1, v1, v2, vn are linearly independent. So we proved a result that whenever the eigenvectors are corresponding to distinct eigenvalues, then we have... Uh, uh, those eigenvectors as linearly independent eigenvectors. Now suppose, now we have a result, if t from v to v, where v is n-dimensional, has n distinct eigenvalues, then t is diagonalizable. So you see, here you don't have to go to the computation of eigenvectors. Why this is so? Because the moment you get n distinct eigenvalues, then using the above result, we will for sure get distinct n linearly independent eigenvectors. So proof is quite simple using the above result. Now, the moment we get n distinct eigenvalues, for sure, we will get n linearly independent eigenvectors and n is the dimension of the space. Therefore, T is diagonalizable. Right. But there is a warning, there is a caveat you have to follow that if T has not n distinct eigenvalues then it does not at all imply that t is not diagonalizable this is the thing you have to keep in mind that we are saying that if t has n eigenvalues distinct then it is diagonalizable but converse is not true right so th this will give you a, a technique to give one way answers so i'll give you two examples here your example is suppose t from r cube to r cube is given by t of x y z is x plus 2 y plus 3 z 2 y plus 3 z 3 z check if it is diagonalizable or not check if it is diagonalizable or not right so let us do it First, you have step 1. You compute an, uh, a matrix representation of T with respect to standard basis. So, let standard basis here is E1, which is 1, 0, 0, E2, 0, 1, 0, E3, 0, 0, 1. So, TSS, you compute it. For that, you will write T of E1, which is T of 1, 0, 0 as linear. This, uh, this will be 1, 2, 0. 1, 0, 0. So, you have to write it as linear combination of E1, E2, E3. And then, T of E2, which is T of 0, 1, 0. That will be 2, 2, 0. So, this is 2 E1 plus 2 E2 plus 0 E3. Then, T of E3, which will be T of 0, 0, 1. That will be 3, 3, 3. So, that is 3 E1 plus 3 E2 plus 3 E3. So, this will be the first column of your matrix. This is going to be the second column of your matrix and this is going to be the third column of your matrix. 
so your tss will be 100220333 right now you find out the eigen values here so this is your a so for step 2 eigen values determinant of a minus lambda i so you do this 1 minus lambda 2 3 2 minus lambda 3 0 3 minus lambda 0 0 equal to 0 so you'll get lambda minus 1 lambda minus 2 lambda minus 3 equal to 0 this is your characteristic equation so you'll get lambda is equal to 1 2 3 right so you get three distinct eigen values distinct eigen values and we have three uh, dimensional vector space we are talking about therefore here itself you get your answer that it is diagonalizable right but now suppose another example i'm giving you that suppose t from r cube to r cube is represented by a matrix One two three, two two three zero zero zero. So can you just looking at the eigen values, looking at the eigen values, tell if it is diagonalizable? No further calculations you have to do. So let us see that here. already the matrix is given so determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0 will give you because this is a lower triangular matrix lambda minus 1 lambda minus 2 lambda minus 2 equal to 0 so you get lambda is equal to 1 2 2 so repeated eigen values therefore we cannot say anything you will not say this is not diagonalizable because even the repeated eigen values may lead to two distinct two linearly independent eigen vectors right we can't say anything just looking at the anything about diagonalizable or not just looking at the eigen values fine so this is how this result is useful that when you get distinct eigen values then you can say that your matrix is uh, your matrix or the associated linear operator is diagonalizable if you don't get distinct eigen values then you have to do further calculations that as we have done in the last videos thank you for watching this video please do subscribe